So the floor is mine. Is that correct? <laughs> all mine. <laughs> good, all. good evening. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jürg Kapol. I'm a Swiss. Um, I was, of course, my whole life involved in Switzerland. You're quite close to mountains in, in winter sport. But I would like you first to show a, a video. You know, in when broadcasting started, TV broadcasting started in, in the 1966 in the Nordic disciplines. And one of our disciplines, which was there since the first Olympic Games in, in the 24, the Olympic Winter Games 24, was cross country. But in 1996, and now I please just play the video. Um, so Harald is here. Like, okay, it's a Norwegian comment. <laughs> And I have to say, that was a 50k, and you know, they the interesting part of a race was to wait. It was just to wait until an athlete came. <laughs> so you see it's almost three hours. But of course you had in cross count, you have to know it's a single start at that time, so each 30 seconds an athlete started. And then, of course, you don't know who is maybe first in the finish. He's not the winner because the bit number 50 was much faster. But people liked still to wait. <laughs> and I don't show you the whole uh, emission, of course, otherwise my 20 minutes would be ra rather quick done. But the excitement still, and even today, and that was 66, so it's a bit more than 50, it's 52 years now, they still like this method of, of a start. Of course, you present it maybe a bit differently. Maybe there is a sponsor around as well not just the winter landscape, but, but when that lead came, of course, he always, and, and Harald could translate everything in, 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 in English, of course, he says, yeah, we have to wait, we have to wait. No, wait, wait, wait a little longer. He will beat, beat the first racer. So um, I guess this was a transmission, a World Championship 66, first time on TV. I'm not sure if he would do it today like that, if he would have a lot of viewers. I, well, personally, now where he comes. <laughs> so, first of the, we had to wait a little bit, but I wanted just to say it was the first time transmitted a sport, and you could not imagine today that that would be seen today. I'm not speaking now about how they ski and, and what kind of banner should be there. Um, and, but still, he won the race, the Norwegian guy, so that was good. So that's the story, how, how actually in, in 66, Cross country, which is one of our sport, um, uh, which was transmitted. But I, I, I wanted first to what actually what is FIS? In this case, is the international snow sport body we have actually founded was is in '24 for the first Olympic Games, and of course, like all those sport federation, um, it comes from a national ski association. In this case, from national uh, sport federation. And um, today, I guess, we have 132 members, that means 132 nations, and we have different disciplines as well in the Olympics. So more than 50% of the medals are actually, in this case, FIS medals. And of course, IOC follows our rules in this case, somewhere from the beginning there, and some really changed it. And I will come back after to some changes. Of course, Alpine was one of the old, hard hard hardcore, old, uh, sports will also tell you something about what the development was. Snowboard is a rather new one, 1988 uh, the first time. Uh, ski jumping was actually also quite from the beginning there. And freestyle, free skiing also came up then with maybe some disciplines rather or, uh, in, in the 90s with moguls and aerials and now also with big air, slope style, uh, etc. Now the combined is the combination between ski jumping and uh, cross country skiing and cross country skiing as such. So of course you can always see, and I heard just before, which new sport came. Of course, I would say skate, skateboard, snowboard, there is some similarities I would say. And also the discipline, how they do it, they started actually first with a parallel slalom, which is maybe more close to alpine and it's probably not the hit today anymore. So there the hits of course is, is more half pipe, etc. Sorry to come with a cartoon. But uh, you have to know I started in FIS at 203. Then I was elected as a, a race director for cross country skiing to see all those pictures. And after one year in my job, I said, we need to change because cross country did a certain development. They have different techniques. So it's a classic technique, it's freestyle as a mean skating technique. They have short races, long races. But at the end, you have been not so clear who was actually the best out of that because the formats were so different. And um, 
In this time of the, my first year, it was uh, one of my colleagues, and he was also the chairman of the cross-country committee, Mr. Ulvang. He won several medals at the Olympic Games as well. I had a sauna with him at his home, and we had a couple of beers, I have to say that as well. And we were thinking how we can generate, in essence, new ideas for cross-country. It's not about the beer, sorry, I should not say that. But it was in probably the Therefore, the story or the cartoon is there. So we were there in this cottage. He had, he had a sauna book, and we did our thoughts through the sauna, what we should do. And we came out with a model like more the Tour de France style, in this sense, a multi-stage event with all different formats. And it should keep the interest um, much longer over a certain period, not just to say today is a race and tomorrow is whatever is the next day. It kept the interest, it should keep the interest for several days. And we had this, this mountain, which you can see on the, on, the, on the right side from your side. We had the final stage, which, which had the finish on the top of a slalom hill. So it was maybe not the, the former way how cross country was. And at that time, we also changed a lot of the formats um, in this case, how you start. I said before you saw it was an interval start. We had many more races in mass start. We had sprint competitions. We introduced them to go to cities as well. We were in several cities as well. And a sprint is in this case about the K in, in, in a city. And uh, you ski and you bring in the snow as you, as you heard the story before with sand or whatever you do. It's a similar story. And it's also, of course, the population of, of sport in, in in Alpine, we have other events which we bring to cities. It's a parallel event now, which is also easier to transmit uh, to several, several towns you have been. Um, so there is this approach, of course, as well, in a big air as well. But when we all did the changes, of course, many said, how you can change the sport? How you can change the soul of your sport, almost? Um, and of course, I, feel I felt at that time, we had to convince maybe athletes that it was, uh, the, the spirit was still okay and everybody took part. And I guess this, this final stage, which I meant, and which came afterwards a big story. And uh, I have to say at that time, someone said I was race director. I had some committees to inform what I think the idea would be good for cross country. Maybe I didn't always tell the whole truth or not the whole story. And they, they never saw that last hill. And we came under this tour de ski one of the last days. Um, was, was this hill then, the last really final stage, and they detected that it was, in this case, a huge hill, not common for cross country. And they, the coaches went, were, were in this sense crazy, were saying, no, we cannot do it, it's bad for the sport, it looks ugly, they're too slow, what image we get? And I said, well, I came up as well that few days before, maybe in a slower speed, of course, so I would say a well-trained athlete will be faster as I am. And I believed in the story to, to celebrate it. And it was a kind of Alp Duas, maybe you know it from, from, uh, from a ra a cycling sport in a, in a Tour de France. We had the first year only 15, 20,000 at the hill, which normally no cross country uh, race took part. And this was just the, the, the cartoon, sorry that I have some cartoons here to, to implement, but just to show that, that at the evening before, we were not sure how we went up, how, it, how we should have the course up, should it be kind of more a giant slalom up, what we should do. We were not sure really. We were not sure if the, if the story is good or bad. But of course, when we did it, I, say, I said there was these 20,000 spectators on the hill. I would say in a, in a small village, I would say we celebrated the cross country and media was from the being very positive from, from uh, the starting point. So, uh, and the last story about this hill, you know, in the evening before we somehow said we fixed the, the, the course, the coaches said, uh, it's not good. We want to fix some, some chain, some skins under my skis. You know, from ski mountaineering, they have some small skins to fix on the skis that you can walk up directly. And then at, at whatever, it was maybe 10 o'clock in the evening, I said to my jury colleagues at that time, well, we should not have the discussion who had the best skins on the skis, who was the fastest. Um, cross country is in this sense an endurance sport. It's the toughest guy you have to fight with you and, and the equipment, but it should be not a, um, an equipment which should decide the race and we should who had the best skins at the skis. So uh, I sent out a message to all the coaches um, and said it was not in the rule, it was not accepted before by anybody. I said who fixed skins will be disqualified. And I switched off my phone, which was good at that time. Because one hour later, I had 56 <laughs> persons which tried to call me, and that was in 2006 already. So, so that just about innovations which we try to do. In the meantime, this product is nine, 10 days when Tour de Ski 
takes place. Um, we have in where CrossCon is popular, we have best ratings in uh, on the whole year. This final stage is the maximum which we can reach actually from the whole season, and nobody is complaining that this hill was impossible to do. It just shows me, you know, we can discuss in between a lot. If we believe, in this case, we believed in idea, we believed to increase the interest for the sport. And um, even the story was maybe extreme for, for even the hardcore uh, cross country persons. Um, today, old ladies coming up perfectly, and at that time, they say it's, it would be impossible. So the impossible step was maybe the key issue, and it was, of course, supported by media, which, which helped a lot, of course. So, but we had other ones, and the World Cup as such was uh, 50 years ago a little bit more, 52 years, it was the first uh, Alpine World Cup actually started in 67. And even the Alpine World Cup, which is um, all the disciplines, downhill, uh, super cheese, slalom, uh, giant slalom, whatever we have in the program today. You know, they had the World Championships in 66 in Chile. Very often, uh, Chile has the South Atmosphere, they had in August the Championships, they had very often bad weather. So they had to stand at the bar and wait what happened with the weather, the coaches. So at that time, they were found out we, we need a series which takes, takes it through the season, what we can do. And at that time, they were also probably creative, those guys, which, and I met some of them even. Um, now the last founder what died actually last year, but I met them before, and, and they had really a good spirit as well. And I guess they had really a spirit to develop the sport, and we need a new product for, for, uh, for alpine skiing. And then it was, uh, Avion was the head first sponsor, and we can say so, maybe sponsor was not related to money, but what he did actually, he communicated a lot. And also, to, of course, to increase interest. And of course, in 67, it was a different story, but Avia helped really to develop what, what they did at that time. And, but today, of course, the, 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 the graphics has, has developed. Of course, um, if, it's, if it's related to airtime, which you know, it works the clip, you see the jumps, you see how long they jump, so, of course, you have like measurement probably how, how you use in certain races. It all probably depends from the provider. But, of course, you should always say what we can show more about alpine sport. And, you know, if it's an acceleration in a curve before you, um, if which speed you lose in a curve. So, all those things were developed, of course, and you try to say where really he made the race or have he lost the race. Because today, many of them skiing so well, and if you don't watch too often, they're all good <laughs> in this case. And um, of course, the speed in Alpine, it's, it's one thing which you want to, to promote. Um, but in off the hand also, the acceleration and the braking point, uh, that's the speed through a race actually, where you lose. Of course, it's also maybe interesting to know where he really lost the race um, for after revelation. It's for coaches important, of course. You compare athlete by athlete. I guess the breaking point, how, 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 how much speed you lost in a curve. And of course, in alpine sport, it's not always the shortest line, the fastest. In between, you need a longer speed. All those things were done, and we had sections. Other sports which we have is, is also ski jumping. Ski jumping, as I said, from the beginning at the Olympic Games. Of course, it's related to real timing where we want to in involve that. Ski jumping as well, you have to know, in the beginning, they always restarted when there are 100 athletes at the start. And of course, in, in an outdoor sport, and you, know, you are in outdoor sport as well, but in ski jumping, wind has a big influence on ski jumping. And um, of course, even when you came with a certain speed to the, to the, to the jump in this case, if, if, if the influence of wind is so huge, of course, it gets dangerous. And especially on a on big hill, like ski flying hill, um, where you jump 250 meters, of course, this um, is a high risk in this case. But at that time, Earlier, you, when you had 100 athletes to start, you had always you had to stop the competition and you went back with them. So you had never a control how long really your competition was. That was important to have a qualification at that time, to set only 50 guys in the first round and certainly the final in the second round. And of course, you have a, a kind of a system where you can choose the speed according to wind situation. You get, uh, get a penalty for that, to say it on an easy way. I don't go too in detail. But nevertheless, some I said, some of the data are really interesting to implement today as well, because the flying curve of somebody and how much speed he lose, you know, from the takeoff 20 meters after, how, how straightforward or where he's flying more down, all those things today we can, we can measure, of course, and we can show. 
um, as the time is running, I have, uh, of course, the angle of your skis you can show. Also, that's a flying help, like the wings in this case. You can show um, how your angle was. And I guess those are issues which, which in your sport is quite common as well, and it's nothing new in this case. In other hand, I feel also, and that's probably for all of us to, to know, and I say always, if you have a certain revenue today, if you have no innovation, that I means in a mathematical formula, I would say plus, <laughs> that means you would generate more. But if we don't follow the digital technology in the future, which is even a multiplicator, we will lose uh, revenue in the future. Maybe not today, and, and also in, in winter sport, most of the, the money which comes in is still, the, I would call it the old model. <laughs> it's still re re regarding media rights and, and, and marketing rights. And of course, the support from, from tourism in, in those, uh, those destinations. But if we don't take care about the techno technology development in the, in the future, we will lose it and we, lo we lose quick. But I guess all of you are here fully involved and know that it's nothing new for you. But I feel, I guess, all the, all the federations in this case, all the venues have something to do. And I even say to Alpine, which, which is our, in this case, our, our cash cow, to say it on an easy way, sorry to say that, but there is most money involved also from the part of the industry, which is, of course, key producer and other producers of equipment, but also in regards that winter sport has a really a strong um, uh, connection with, with tourism, of course, because you go to winter sport vacation. And this is a kind of a, a big target which we should, should uh, follow up. But we need still to work on our format still. We have still a kind of, and um, I have to say, we're a, a conservative federation, like all the federations. Sorry to say that if somebody is here from a federation. But, but it's, it's to push them still. And of course, as a marketing person, I have to say I was once a sport, an athlete as well, but, but nevertheless, it's there, they're so often in a so high passion about the sport and believe that's the best. Just earlier, we had a meeting in Zurich, and I asked, we have an Alpine committee, and asked them, should we change the World Cup or not? Or give me some points which you like to change. And even now, well, at least I could convince them, 75% were positive to say we should maybe adapt something. <laughs> so this is a kind of tool to say, now we have to really work with those tools. And I, and I don't want to go too deep in, in the detail here, um, but for, for me as a target, of course, the World Cup brand is, it should be, a, especially in the winter sport, of course, we should uh, create more. Today, we only added new competition formats, but we didn't really create the, for the product as such. It's a mistake. It's not good enough, and um, so therefore, we have still something to do. And, and winter sport has maybe, I know encounters where winter sport is broadcasted. You have very often those long weekends on Saturday, Sunday, and you can watch winter sport from 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock in really in several countries, in Eurosport or whatever follows, follows that. So there is winter sport actually wins a lot because it's a full program. And you follow programs from one to the next. Even you have maybe one of your favorite sport, but people stay. Maybe not the whole day, but still you follow. It's, it's a... It's, it's a part, I'm not going to the structure because the running in time as well. And in Alpine sport, we have also a problem to say we have too many athletes at the start. And when I ask our, our TV directors, I said, why you don't reduce your starting field? It's because you, you, in a downhill, you stop a race to transmit, but, um, but you have still 40 guys to on, on the race. I said, well, how, that's not the good start. And also how we set up a race where the best starts, they're too early too early with, with lower bips because they say it's the best conditions for them. But of course, looking like a drama or like reading a crime, I would say when I know the murder of the three pages, why I should read the next 300 pages. So that's all mistakes which we still do, which I, which I have to say, to admit, um, which we are not good enough. And I said them this, it was just from this morning as well, we need two divisions. We need only a first division. We cannot do it on the same hill. We have a, a TV production on site. Of course, winter sport has always a, a little bit of trouble, of course, from, from influence of weather. It can be very windy in the mountains. It can be snowy, it can be foggy, whatever. It has, of course, with a high speed, it has a certain risk. Therefore, this the security, especially in alpine sport, as well as ski jumping, of course, is high, and we have to take care about the factor. But nevertheless, I said we need really this A-League in this case, um, and we have a run down, or you can close down the top 30 that are running there up, and of course of the two races, maybe if you didn't do the good points, you will fall down and you're in, an, in a challenge league. 
And this could be transmitted earlier the day before, and we could even generate probably more interest for, for uh, the event and the weekend. But that's things you see, we, we are not at the end. And I feel really with, with the cash cow, we have to, to cash cow, I called it Alpine before, we have to take care, and it's, it's, it's still a lot to do. I'm happy to follow that, and um, also, of course, digital could now speak a long, a long way as well. And we will, ha we'll, we will actually launch our first uh, World Cup Alpine game on 9th of January. It's a mobile game, but it's there for us. The key issue is engagement, and of course, to get to know our fans as, as better as well. And if it has a strong relevance to our uh, partners and also ed academic brands which are involved. So I see I have zero, zero here. That means I should probably stop. <laughs> Is that correct? <laughs> I could still speak, but that's uh, in between my problem. Um, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, great applause. What you don't know is that uh, uh, Jörg, you just came uh, from the airport, so, so straight from the airport here, so and you're on time, perfectly on time, uh, within the 20 minutes. Uh, we are running late, but you're on time. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for this presentation. It shows her, uh, us how it is important to follow trends and adapt uh, for um, to survive, actually. So, any questions from uh, the audience? Any questions? Yes, we have one question. Can, can we bring a... And for those who haven't been there, we uh, uh, we had uh, to stand still for uh, an hour or two with nothing happen at all. Uh, and then they suddenly, yeah, when they can come out of the woods over a place and then into the stadium. Um, and I can remember that uh, the average age of the audience at that time was quite old. I mean, Norway is special. We have a tradition going cross-country skiing ourselves. But uh, these days, with a modern outlook, a modern profile on your product. Has the audience changed at all? Yeah, first I have to say, you have to know at that time that there were two times 25K. So if you were standing as a spectator, you waited, you saw them maybe twice, you were athlete, but you were there out for probably for three to four hours and you had to walk out in the, in the forest. So just uh, how you can be a fan of that. And I say today still, the Norwegians are one of the few which still like to go out the forest. Maybe they have a good party the whole night. Can you be in the forest? Um, but it has, of course, what we changed, of course, is the length of, of a course. Of course, if you have several loops, you're more compact, of course, you transmit it differently. I, about fans, it a little bit depends from which channel we follow. Uh, fans on site, if it's on TV, and TV, in this case, you know, probably all the ratings where they are, the average of, of TV viewers, but that's probably with all the programs almost, I have to say. Um, of course, in our digital world, we see also how we reach younger audience and how they follow. In this case, it's, it's maybe a little bit how you follow. And of course, it's, it's like it, it's also existing when, I, when we speak about cross country, it's a, a, ski cross, a ski cross with cross country skis. It's also existing in this case. And of course, it's the animation of skiing in this case. Because when you can have a balance on the skis, probably will once be a good, good skier. And of course, some ball bumps will, will let you learn how you ski, actually. So that that's has a, an influence on how you, you teach in this case. I guess if you go to kids and say, now run 10 Ks immediately, um, probably he will do it once, but he's not coming the second time then. So you need the animation part is a part of the education, uh, of course, which is a big part. And also it creates fans. It creates in some counties where, where cross count is popular, the profile can be. And of course, a guy like the head Peter Nordhoek was one of the, the star which they had. He had another profile. And, of, and uh, I remember there were, I yeah, was in Norway, there were all the football players, maybe Norway is not so good in football, but still they're quite famous still for in their country. Uh, but they, all the kids, 14 years, they want to go Peter Nordrock's autogram. So, and then there were players which played in England at that time beside him, but Peter Nordrock was the star. Maybe not believable in some countries, but in Norway it's the case actually. So yes, he, he, he came with some another way. And of course, before they were the kind of traditional sport, they had red, red socks and were going out in the forest and coming back after two hours. So that's a conservative, really the most conservative sport. So having a guy like says, um, okay, have a different, pre uh, different uh, profile, it was in this sense really, I was happy to see it actually, and to, to get attention from a younger audience. 
Well, thank you very much, Jörg. Thank you for your presentation. Um, and uh, uh, we can uh, give again a great applause to your couple. Thank you very much.